So I'm Alex Anderson, and um, I want to talk to you about marking your quilt when you're hand quilting. And I also want to talk to you about thimbles, all right? This is all about hand quilting. So what I want to talk about first are what you don't want to use when you're marking a quilt. So let's start with this. You do not want to use a number two lead pencil. Mm -mm. And the reason is, I did it once. Oh, yes, I did. Probably 40 years ago and it's still in the quilt. The problem here is that these leads are very, very soft and so it will get into the fabric and it will then stay, the gift that will stay forever, all right? Now the trick with hand quilting is that you want it to stay in long enough but not forever and ever. This is forever and ever, amen, don't do it. So what do I mark with? Well, my favorite thing is a silver pencil. And they you don't have to get it from a quilt shop, though I would love it if you did. Um, there's different brands. Well, Roxanne has one that's you know meant for quilting. This is a barrel, there's Eagle, and there you can get them at art supply stores, okay? I have like a, a box of these things. And so when I'm marking a quilt to be hand quilted, I will just I will just like have a pencil sharpener and just sharpen a bunch of them and have them ready to go and yay and then you've got enough to last you for life okay now if it says very thin silver that just means that the lead is very thin so it doesn't matter if it says it but it's not some big mystery if it does say very thin all right the other thing that happens sometimes is you want to mark things as you are going along. Like, let's say I've marked all my feathers and cables and all that stuff, but I don't want to mark the grid. That's going to take forever. So I'm going to mark the grid as I go. Uh, these, in the olden days, they had were like little heart-shaped things. And what it is, is, let me get a piece of fabric here. It is a chalk. Okay, it's got like a rolling thing and it comes out. Love my buttons. Here, here's another one. I don't know. And I don't even know which one your quilt shop would have. There we go. You know, you just mark as you go. The thing with these is that it will come out. So you would never, ever, ever pre-mark a whole quilt with this because it's going to go bye-bye. All right. It's for like touch-ups. Uh, the other one that you can do use that for, too, would be the General's Charcoal Pencil. That's another one that will not stay on forever and ever, but not even more than whatever, so you only mark it as you, as you go. So this is, this is my go-to right here. Now, a lot of us um, have fallen in love with the Pilot Friction Pen. And the problem with the pilot friction, well, the good news is, is if I want to mark things that are not going to show, I love this thing. Um, you hit it with an iron and it goes away, the marking. However, the problem here with this is that sometimes it can leave what I would call ghost markings. And so I would steer clear of this for marking a quilt top because like, let's say you make a mistake or or you don't quite hit it when you're hand quilting it like it's to one side of the line, there's a darn chance you could have a ghost marking. It's almost like a, it's almost like a little bleach or something. Now, I have, in full disclosure, I have used it when I'm doing my Cindy Needham linen quilts, but they're white, so the ghost marking's not going to happen, all right? The other thing that I have done is um, I have sometimes put the quilt on the frame okay just the feathers i haven't gotten the the uh the background grid yet okay in comes here but then let's say i want to do some more feathers i have been known to use the blue disappear the blue water soluble ink pen and that will stay in as long as you need it the problem is is that whenever i'm using that blue pen i want it out immediately all right so it doesn't sit permanently okay the other problem with that pen is that it goes uh, it leaves like a residue and so you can literally feel it with your needle you can you like ee, 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 ee. you can feel it okay and so and so I, I would steer clear of that 
do I use it? Yes. And now I use my um, Quilter Select Purple Disappearing Pan, and it might last, I don't know, 24, 48 hours, but you still have the, the, the ink that you're going through, but sometimes you just have to do that. Back in the good old days, there was, um, there was a pen pencil like this. It was fatter, and it had uh, blue and or pink lead, charcoal lead. I know of a person who marked a whole antique quilt with it, and it did not come out. So whenever you introduce a color to your quilt, marking your quilt top, always test it. I mean, basically, you've got the chemicals of the fabric or fibers of the fabric, you know, and then you got this, and they better get along together. Also, let's say you were doing a white quilt or a white background, and, and so this is not going to show this white powder. What I would do is there's powder that comes like in yellow and blue and pink. I gravitate to the blue, and if you have one, okay, I would say one eighth of it, I would pre-mix it. One eighth of it, I would make blue, and then seven eighths of it, I would make white, all right? And then it leaves a very, very faint, faint line. And remember, you're just marking this as you are um, quilting, so it doesn't have to stay in, and it doesn't have to be big, and it's just, you know, don't even worry about it. Now, there, I, I had a friend once, Nadine Thompson. I, I wonder, she moved. I wonder what's going on with her. She did the most exquisite Baltimore album quilts. I mean, over the top, all right? And she wasn't going to mark her quilt with anything, so she used quarter-inch tape quilting tape. So there's a lot of different things you can do, but I think the big takeaway is do not use this. Please, please, please do not use a number two, two school bus pencil. Oh, and some quilt shops, they sell like pencils that are super, super um, hard lead. And so I understand those are going to be okay, but this has always been my go-to, just the silver. Okay. So Test, always test, make sure it comes out, and there you go. The quilt behind me is the only quilt that I marked with a silver pencil, and it did not come out. And I was just heart sick, because I kept the, I mean, yeah, it's dark when you're doing it, okay. And then as you work, it rubs away, it rubs away, it rubs away. Um, I thought, oh boy, oh boy. So I threw it in the washing machine with, a, with some centerpole, and it took it out. All right, because that would, I mean, oh, talk about heart sick. Okay, the other thing is, let's just, this particular quilt, a lot of people have asked about it. It's in my book, Beautifully Quilted, that I found a couple on Amazon, but you can also get it as a download or a print on demand at CNT Publishing. The pattern for the quilt is in it, as well as the pattern for the quilting. So that's cool. All right, that was, you know, when you sit in your hand quilt and you've got these motifs, they just like come up, right? They just, you just, ah, I just love it. It's just, I love it, okay? So now let's talk about thimbles. I have a ton of thimbles. And your thimble, what you use is extremely important. So I have this box. I made this box, by the way. Um, from my woodshop teacher, Dr. Cassay, in Sacramento. It was fun. So I've got all these crazy things in here. Um, let me pull this one out. Uh, let's see. What you have to assess is how you work. And next Monday, we will be doing that. Here, here's, here's some more. I mean, I've got so many, it's just stupid, okay? So, I'm going to teach you how I quilt, which is very different than how most people quilt, because I wear my thimble on my pointer finger, all right? And um, actually, this is one by Tommy Lane that I just love, absolutely love. And you wouldn't want to purchase something like this until you know you love hand quilting, because you're talking 100 bucks. Um, this one is the Thimble Lady, Nujin Lumen. I love this because it has big indentations. And my very first fancy thimble was a Roxanne one. 
And what you'll note here is that in the case of these thimbles, you can see, well here you can see where I work, you can see here it's got big indentations, and then here is, this has good indentations. I work off of, off of my finger, my pointer finger. So when you're working off your pointer finger, and you're going to try all different ways, um, think of going right in here, which tells me a thimble like this is not going to work. This thimble is designed for working off your middle finger. And what happens when you work off your middle finger, you've got this little ridge here, the needle end goes right here, and that edge keeps it from popping off. This would not work on my pointer finger because I don't have a place right in there to work. This is another good one. I think this one's clover, I think, um, for working on your middle finger because, again, it's got the, the rim and everything doesn't come popping off. So literally, when you are hand quilting, this is what is going to be holding the needle. These little indentations right in here. And then you've got this little catch place so that if it slips, it doesn't go under your fingernail. This was a, a, a thimble that I used for quite a while, and it too, you can work off the side of it. Well, I'll tell you what's funny is that I actually wore through it, okay? I mean, this isn't the original, but it went all the way through. In fact, my very first thimble was sterling silver, and I did wear holes in it. Mrs. Kelly gave me that. Um, then, oh, okay, what about things like this? These are great little pads that I use when I'm doing like my handwork, all right? For quilting, I don't suggest it because the chances of you picking up your needle and then engaging it right where it needs to be, you have a good chance of it slipping and then you are going to be sorry beyond measure. There's also a uh, some leather thimbles. There's a beige one and it's too big and clunky for me um, and then there's a little black one and in the black one there's a little metal pad in it and in the beginning I used that and then all I had to do was a couple times miss that middle pad and I was going to be crying boohoo like there's no tomorrow okay so I would I would keep these for handwork and Actually, the only time I wear a thimble is when I'm quilting. I do not wear a thimble when I'm doing my handwork because it, it drives me crazy. And maybe it's because I learned to quilt with it on my pointer finger and not my middle finger. All right? So if you're, if you're going to learn to quilt away from yourself, which I'm going to teach you on Monday, uh, Monday the, I don't know, in, I don't know what the date is. Monday. <laughs> it's Monday. Today is August 10th, okay? Um, when, when I work with my thumb, I work off the side of the thimble. So you can see that this is really a rotten old thimble that has been loved and used like no tomorrow, and it's got really great indentations on the side. So if I sit down at my quilt frame, yes, quilt frame, these are probably the two thimbles that I will be using and or um, the thimble ladies and or um, Roxanne's, okay? Where do, where do you get these fancier thimbles? Well, I'm pretty sure that thimble lady, Lucian Newman, sells them on her site, okay? And we did a show with her, so you might want to go look at that at thequiltshow.com. She quilts very differently than me. Um, this one, this, this company was by Tommy Lane, and she recently sold it, and so you'll find this, these thimbles at the major shows. And in all cases, you can order online, but to me, it's all about how it fits. It, it's all about, like, let's say your knuckles are big, you know, you wouldn't want one that came down too much. You know, I think trying on these high-end thimbles in, per, in person is a good deal. And then I, I don't even know how I got this. You can't even get them anymore. But I thought, well, that's kind of ingenious, all right? You know, it's kind of on the end, kind of on the ball, on the end. So how do you know if a thimble is the right size or not? What you want to be able to do is put it on, not have it squeeze, and be able to shake your finger 
like that and it won't come flying off. All right. So that's what you want to do. If you are thimble resistant for hand quilting, just put one on your hand and like wear it for a day around the house. When I'm hand quilting, that thimble and I become one and I'll find myself almost at the grocery store with my thimble on. I just, I forget it's even there. And so, but I'll tell you again, when it comes to doing my handwork, I, I can't use a thimble. I've got to use these crazy little pads. And I do think we have these at thequiltshow.com and they just stick on. So that's what I want to say about thimbles. There's a bunch out there. You'll finally find the one that you love, but the first thing you have to do is assess how are you going, where is that thimble going to go? And for that, I would just start with an inexpensive one. I, I mean, this clover one is pretty darn good, okay? It, it, it's got everything. In the end, you won't love it because it's, oh, whoops, sorry. Uh, it's got little, um, it's like one size fits all. It's got little things that go over. Okay, yay, so it fits, but then your thread can get caught in it, you know? So, but this is a good one, I think, to just start with. And I, I think most people carry it. Um, the other thing I want to say too, is that when I am pre-marking a quilt like the one behind me, I will, um, draw up the template, all right, on a piece of paper. And here is a template of mine just for grins. It was for one of my quilts. Um, that is, a, a tracing paper. I draw what I want to quilt. I then on, on the paper, not my quilt, on the paper, I will use a Sharpie felt tip pen. All right. So then when I have this ready to go and in this particular template, this is from a quilt of mine, it actually had a star in the middle. So I did two templates that I could layer on each other. Um, then what I do is I have this really expensive light table. And here it is, it's quarter inch plexiglass. I put it between two chairs, like the one I'm sitting on, and I put a light under it. Then what I do is I take this particular template and I pin it to the underneath side of the quilt top. Haven't basted it yet. Underneath the quilt top. And then I use my pencil my pencil to mark it all, all right? I marked a black quilt with this and you could see through that table. Now, what was interesting is that when I was sitting there working, I couldn't see the marking because the light from the, t from the lamp was um, glaring too much. And so I would take my knee and then move it over the light and then I could see where I was marking and stuff like that. So anyways, uh, I love hand quilting. I don't think there's anything like it. I will say that, you know, I'm, I've, I've got kind of chops in some areas of quilting, but when it comes to hand quilting, that's my glory. <laughs> so anyways, um, I hope you find this interesting. This is in lieu of Wednesday, August 10th, uh, broadcast because gremlins were somewhere in the house and John said just do it and we'll put it up and there you go. So I will see you guys Friday and there we will talk about do you want to work on a hoop or do you want to work on the frame and what are the benefits of both. All right and where do you get a frame? Mm -hmm. Okie doke. Have a uh, great day. Thanks for watching and um, I appreciate you spending time with me. Bye-bye.